The database that I'm going to discuss with you is EBSCO. EBSCO Host is one of the bigger database companies in the nation, and it is a humanities-focused database. Now that doesn't mean that it doesn't cover other topics, as I'll show you when we get into the database, it does, but it tends to be focused a little more heavily on the humanities. So to get into EBSCO from Access Rio, if you are off campus, you're gonna click on EBSCO host here. If you are on campus, then you would go from the library homepage, select articles and databases, and select EBSCO host here. Either one will take you to the EBSCO database. Now from here on the interface, you'll notice that there are three search boxes. Separating each search box is a smaller box with the word and. When you click on this, you'll see two other options, or and not. These are called Boolean operators. Basically, they help you with your search, help to narrow or refine the search, depending on the keywords that you use. Now, EBSCO is really the parent name of the database company. EBSCO actually has a lot of smaller databases within it. I like to call them baby databases. So to see which databases we're searching through here when we're looking through EBSCO, you wanna come up here at the top. It says searching academic search complete comma show all. So there are other databases here. You'll notice when I hover over that show all link, it gives the full list of databases that I'm searching through. If I want to choose or refine my databases, I can actually click on this link here that says choose databases. If I click on that, it will give me a pop-up with all of the databases that I'm currently searching through within EBSCO. So these are all databases that EBSCO owns and hosts, and each database has its own specialty or focus. If you notice here, when I hover over this little pop-up icon, a description of the database appears on the right-hand side here, giving you a description of what type of information is within Academic Search Complete. This one here you'll see is a history and life database, so it does focus on history, Business, Eric is an educational database. Green file, for example, is an environmental database. So you can look through and see which of these databases work for you and your topic and which don't. You'll notice that some of these are not checked off right now. By default, the ones that are checked off are what are being searched through when you search through all of EBSCO. You can always include these by clicking on the boxes and adding them to your search. So Null Complete, for example, is a nursing and health focused database. I happen to know that for my topic, I'm not gonna need this database, so I'm going to uncheck it. If you wanted to include all of them at the top, you could click Select All, and that will check all of them off. Or if you wanna start from scratch, you can deselect all of them and then make your selections accordingly based on your topic. It's up to you. I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm gonna leave it with the default that was originally selected for me. And I'm gonna click okay. Here's where I'm gonna type in my search. So my topic is the border wall between Mexico and the United States. I have a couple of options of search terms. In fact, I made a list of different search terms that I can use before I'm beginning my research. And this is something that I always recommend students do is brainstorm your topic, brainstorm search terms, come up with as many terms as you can, combination of terms, synonyms, etc. 
The more options you have written down, the more options you have to search in the database, and that way you won't get stuck in your research. A lot of times students begin with one search term and they only stick with that, and then they run into a wall of not finding information that they're looking for. The more uh, combinations that you have or different search terms, the more results you'll get that will help you with your research. So I'm going to start with something very basic. I'm going to start with border wall. Now you'll notice that there is a drop down list of options that appears. These are either topics that other people have typed uh, and have become popular or they are options that the database itself has generated as a suggestion for you to use. I'm sticking with my original border wall just because I want to see what it gives me. But these are suggestions that I might consider later on. So these are some search terms that I would write down for a future search. So I'm going to click search or hit enter. And I want you to notice here on selecting a field, this is optional. I did not select anything, but I could select through all text, through author, uh, by title, by subject terms, by source, by abstract only, and even by numbers. These are ISBN numbers, ISN numbers. I'm not selecting anything, so by default, it's gonna search through everything to look for these keywords. So I'm going to click search and it might take a second to give you some results. And up here at the top, you're going to notice how many search results you get. So I got nearly 16,000 search results for border wall. Now with EBSCO, you'll notice they bold the search terms that you typed in. So I typed in border wall. So here you'll notice in bold is border wall. If I scroll down here is borders, just borders, not border wall. And it is in bold. Here is border wall combination. And then here is wall by itself. So what you're noticing is that sometimes you'll see border wall together and sometimes you'll get the words individually, just border, just wall. If you want to avoid this problem, you can do a search for a specific phrase. So to create this into a specific phrase, you would want to add quotation marks both to the end and to the beginning of the phrase. What this does is it restricts the phrase or tries to restrict the phrase, telling the database, I don't want border by itself. I don't want wall by itself. I only want the phrase combined border wall. And I'm going to redo my search. So you'll notice that my results changed. Instead of having 16,000 results, I have 10,000 results. So I got rid of a good amount of results that maybe weren't what I was looking for. Maybe it only talked about borders by themselves or walls by themselves. I have a greater chance of getting the combination that I'm looking for. Now, it doesn't mean it's perfect. Sometimes it still gives me individual results with just one word, but it is trying to give me that set combination. Okay. Now from here, I want to look at my filters on the left hand side. Now the filters on the left hand side are to narrow down your results even further. 10,000 is still a lot of articles to look through. The first thing I want to point out to you are the source types. So these are all of the different types of sources that the database has newspaper articles, magazine articles, trade publication articles, journal articles, and academic journal articles. You'll notice that these numbers are the same. Typically they mean the same thing. But if your instructor 
or professor is requiring a scholarly academic journal article, then you want to make sure it says academic journal article here. And also up here at the top is scholarly peer reviewed journals as an option to select. If I click on show more, it will show me any additional source types that are within the database. And here in EBSCO, I can pick and choose which sources I'm looking for. One I'm going to tell you that you definitely want to stay away from is reviews. Reviews are just like movie reviews. They tell you about the movie, but you don't actually get to watch it. So these reviews tell you about a book that's about the topic, but you don't actually get to read it. It doesn't actually provide you an article and it doesn't actually provide you with any research information at all for your topic. So these generally tend to not be useful at all. So you don't want to include these in your search results. Depending on your professor, all of these could potentially be good sources for you to use. If your instructor is requiring only scholarly academic journal articles, then this is the only one that you want to check off. And you also want to make sure to go back and check off scholarly peer reviewed journals. That will eliminate everything else. I'm going to go ahead and do that just because most instructors preparing you for a four year university are going to ask you to select scholarly peer reviewed journals. And I'm going to click update. Now, just to make sure, I'm going to click on my scholarly peer reviewed journals checkbox here as well. It eliminated one, so I'm at 96 articles now. This is very manageable. Now, you'll notice here there's also a publication date. This updated on its own when I selected the source type that I wanted. So I'm at 2010 to 2020. If I wanted to refine this even further and focus on a more recent year of publication, then I can change this to let's say 2015. And all I would need to do is click anywhere outside of that box and it will update. And it got rid of about six articles, so I'm down at 90. I'm going to keep scrolling and looking through my filters. The ones that I want to point out to you are subject. When you click on this, it's going to give you a f about six subjects to look through and select from. But if you click on show more, that will give you the complete list of subjects. And this is to help refine your search even further. Now, notice I typed in border wall, but a border wall can exist in many countries. It doesn't have to be just the United States and Mexico. So in my subject terms, this is an opportunity for me to specify that search. I could click on United States, Mexico and United States relations. If I'm interested on articles about Donald Trump and his view on the wall, I could select that. I'm going to go ahead and click a couple of terms that I think are relevant to what I'm looking for. And I'm going to keep going down. You'll notice that there are numbers here next to each subject term. This is how many articles address this subject. And so it could possibly go all the way down to one and I'll click update. You definitely want to take your time with those for the sake of this demo. I'm only selecting a few very quickly and now I'm down to 23. This is a very manageable number for me and my research, but there are additional filters that I could use. Uh, one that I definitely want to bring your attention to is language. This database is an international publishing database, so it carries articles from all over the world. Typically, you will see articles in many different languages. 
for what I've filtered out so far, most of my articles are in English. There's one in Spanish. If you see other languages listed and you don't know how to read them, then you definitely want to make sure you have English selected. The last important filter is geography. When I click on this, it will give you a list of areas of focus, geographical areas of focus based on your topic and what you've already filtered out. This is a relatively short list for me, but some results will give you very long lists. And depending on your topic, you may want to keep or eliminate certain choices. These all look good to me, so I'm gonna Go ahead and leave them as they are and click cancel. And now I can start diving into my results.